I'm so glad this was left up here because I'm going to start with it today. Uh, just because we're having so much fun, I think that I should be able to have lots of fun too. Go ahead, you can do yours. Okay, this is, this is a Jewish toy. Do you know when it gets used in church? You know. It gets used in church when they tell the story of Haman, Mordecai, and Esther. So someday we're going to do that in church. So keep tuned because we're going to do this in church and we're going to hand out dreidels. Actually, dreidels are the spinning ones, aren't they? Okay, these are the noisemakers. And every time Haman's name gets mentioned, it's boo! And every time uh, Mordecai's name gets mentioned, it's yay! But there's lots of noise and there's lots of activity. And, and you know what? It cements the meaning of the story into the minds of our children. And that's why we do VBS. That's why we do Children's Church. I know that as parents, as grandparents, as people of this, this congregation, this, this larger friendship group that we have, you are interested in our kids knowing that Jesus rescues. Now, those texts, those texts that were read, I, my, my job is to, is to kind of pull them all together. But you know what? I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do one better. Are you ready? We're going to have a story about a shipwreck. Are you ready? Here we go. There was a time in, in, in Apostle Paul's life where he decided that he must go to Jerusalem and his friends said, don't go to Jerusalem because there are some nasty guys in Jerusalem that, that, that want to do nasty things to you. Don't go, Paul. Do you think he listened? I, I think he was like my friend right here. I tell him things to do. He doesn't necessarily think that they're the right thing to do because he knows what he needs to do. And he goes and does it. And most of the time, you know what? He's right. He's right. He knows what he wants to do and he keeps on going. In fact, what happened to Paul was exactly what they predicted would happen and that he was arrested. He was arrested and they put him in chains and they put him in a, in a prison and then they, they started transporting him because when, when they, when they put him in prison and they accused him, Paul said, you know what? I want to appeal my case to Caesar. And Caesar was the big king of the Roman Empire. I want to stand before Caesar and tell him, I am not wrong. I am falsely accused. And you know what? In Roman Empire, that was the right of every Roman citizen. You could appeal your case to Caesar. And if that was the case, then you had to be shipped off, literally in a boat, you had to be shipped off all the way to Rome. And so we find in Acts 26 and around in that area before he's, he's, he's before Agrippa and then he is sent by King Agrippa to Rome. And so in Acts chapter 27, you have a storm that takes place and it is a storm that Paul said would happen. He said, we shouldn't sail. We shouldn't, we shouldn't sail. We shouldn't go because there's going to be a storm. But there was some nice winds and the sailors thought, you know, this is good weather. We should go. And so they disobeyed. What did we learn this week? Even when you are wrong, Jesus saves. And guess what? The story goes just like that. They're in the midst of this amazing storm. Do you know how long it went for? Over two weeks. And they didn't eat. They hardly drank. All they were doing was trying to keep the ship together. And at the end, at the end, they were literally throwing their food overboard. They were throwing the tackle overboard. And then finally, they did listen. They did listen to Paul. Because Paul said, last night, an angel came to me and said, we're all going to survive. Nobody is going to die. The next morning, though, he caught some sailors. They were dropping a lifeboat over the side and they were going to get in that lifeboat because they thought, 
heck with this, I'm going to save myself. You know what Paul said to the, to the centurion, to the captain of the guard? He said, look, if those guys get in that boat, I cannot guarantee their safety. They have to stay with this boat if they want to be saved. So they cut the ropes and they stayed with the boat. Later on, as the waves were pounding the back of that ship and literally breaking it apart on a sandbar just on the side of Malta, the island of Malta, everybody that could swim jumped into the water. And those that couldn't swim, they grabbed onto a piece of the broken ship and the waves took them into the shore. And as Paul told them, not one person died. Not one person died. The really cool thing happened next. They made a fire to get themselves warm because it was cold and they were wet. And as Paul was picking up some brushwood and putting it onto the fire, out of the brushwood came a viper. And it, the Bible says it latched on to his hand. And so here's Paul with a snake dangling from his hand. And all the villagers were going, ooh, he, it, he, he's a murderer. He must be a murderer because he made it out of the sea. The sea didn't kill him, but now certainly this viper is going to kill him and that's going to be justice. Well, Paul just took that viper and flicked it off into the fire and he didn't die. And suddenly the people are going, there's something very strange about this guy. It just so happened there was a very nice man on the island that took them in and he gave them food and shelter. All of these over 200 people on the ship, by the way. This is not a small operation. Over 200 people on the ship, he takes care of them. And his dad is sick. So Paul says, can I pray for him? Paul comes in there, he prays, he lays hands on him, and his father gets well. He had dysentery. He was going to die. Then all the other people on that island heard that that this man Paul was healing people and they all, they brought all their sick people to Paul and he healed them. Do you know that they stayed on that island almost three months and they were taken care of? And then they were given a ship that had originally come from Alexandria and that ship took them on their journey and finally Paul got to Rome. But you know what? The, the Roman soldiers trusted him so much by this time that they didn't even put him in prison. They put him in a house with just one soldier. And they said, you stay here because all your friends, all your friends need to come and see you and you need to see them. We don't need to put you in prison because we know you're not running away because you want to see Caesar. And of course, you're going to see Caesar because not one of the people on that ship died. We believe you now, Paul. My friends, in this, in this week, we have learned, we have, we have gone around and around and around the bush many, many times on this one issue that no matter whether we are maybe a little sad, maybe, maybe we feel like we did something wrong, maybe we are lonely, we learned many things. And every single time, what did we learn, kids? That Jesus rescued. I hope you got the point, moms, dads, everybody, that the island that we've been talking about is where? It's this earth. And we're, we're, we're shipwrecked. We're shipwrecked on this earth. And like Paul on the island of Malta, we still have a place that we need to be going. We still need to get to heaven. We still need to plead our case before God and we want to be in His presence. Thank God for Jesus who allows us to do that on a daily basis, yes? But at the same time, I know that all of us are looking very much forward to Jesus coming back, taking us home so that we can live together as a big family just like this in His presence. We need to be rescued. And if you could have been here the other night, you would have seen us. We handed out glow sticks. Some of you know that because they came home. We handed out glow sticks. We turned out the lights and I said, put your flare in the sky. Tell Jesus that you need to be rescued. Because the fact is that I hope all of us come to that place in our lives where we know that there is no future 
that is of any length of time without Jesus. And that without Jesus, the plan that God has given us for saving us, for rescuing us off of this planet in its current form, little little shout out to my friend Eric who, who loves hymns, uh, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I like to say they got it wrong. This world is our home, right? This world, this planet is our home. It's going to be fixed up by God and He is going to bring us back here and He is going to live with us. Is that not what He promises? God with men. God with humans. That's what Emmanuel means and He has promised He's going to do it for the entire world. So we learned this week that He is first going to rescue us and then He's going to bring us back to an earth made new and we will live with Him forever and ever and ever. I was with some friends just yesterday. Had the opportunity to do a funeral for a very dear friend of mine. And I want you to know that I'm going to say the same thing to you now that I said to them with his casket right beside me. As we get older, folks, and you youngins, you'll get to feel this way soon enough. Life is going by very quickly. And when you get to be like some of you who are, you know, reached the 60 mark, maybe you've reached the 70 mark, you realize, hey, this is not enough. I don't think this is a, a very long life at all. And you're thinking, oh, I hope I live till I'm 90 or 100. And then you talk to the people who are 90 and 100 and you say, it's not a very long life. So here's my, here's my, my question to you. How many of you really, really want to live forever? Yeah? You want to live forever? Well, I've got news for you. Jesus has given us a way to be rescued off of this island and that He promises that we can live forever. I say that's really good news. And it's the kind of news that this world needs right now. Because as we look around in the world today, we, 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 we get kind of a queasy feeling and we, we just wonder how it's all going to play out. And we realize there is really not any other good solution to the problems of this world except for Jesus. He is the plan. He is the solution. He is the way off of the island. He is the way back to the island, back to this world one day. He is our Creator God. And here we are on a Sabbath day that He created. And we're honoring the Creator God who will one day bring us back to this world and recreate it. And here is where we will have church every week. Amen. Every week on an earth made new. I say that's a really good future and we can be proud of it. We can be thankful that Jesus has provided the pathway back to God for us. Thank you kids for coming to VBS. May you never ever forget the stories that you have learned this week. May you never ever forget that Jesus rescues. Amen. All right, if I could ask the kids to come up with me one more time, we're going to sing our closing song soon and very soon, rejoicing and singing about the day where we sing our King.
sometimes people want to say this is the future of the church. I say no. This is the church. This is part of the church. This is a, a very precious part of the church. And I again want to thank Linda and everybody who participated to make these kids have such a wonderful week this week. May you, in your family time, continue on what has happened here. If you want a copy of anything that we have done this week, please see Linda about that. There are songs to be had. There are scriptures to be read. And these can be done repeatedly. And I would encourage you as families to get around the Word of God, to sing these songs, because your kids know them. And they can teach them to you. And you too can sing, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Would you stand with me as we have closing prayer? Father God, we thank You. You have entrusted us with lives, with little humans who, who are amazing individuals who have such such brains, such lives, such personalities. And Lord, you have asked us to teach them about you. We have done that this week. We pray that these lessons will be embedded, that they will never forget, and that they will know that whatever happens to them in life, you will be there to rescue them. Father, we're thankful that we can be a part of a great big family, the human family, that you are interested in taking home with you very soon, soon and very soon, that we may stand before our King and our God and say, you have saved us. We are here because of you. We long to spend eternity with you, Jesus. We are grateful that you have made a way. Now, as we depart from this place, send your Holy Spirit with us to lead us and to guide us in this coming week, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. God bless you all. Remember, there's lunch awaiting those who need it. Have your kids. Hug them tight. We love them. <laughs>